just sets up beautifully. And so we're going to watch Autumn Burchett time shifted 3 0 with Goblins against Daniel Garcia Rosas playing Rakdos Pyromancer. Looks like Burchett is on a mulligan, uh, and we are underway here. So, Skirk Prospector, a great place to start. And, you know, this might be a little much, but the Skirk Prospector might be like the best one drop creature in the format. It wouldn't surprise me, but this matchup is one of the difficult ones for Goblins. That card okay. right there, Dreadhorde Arcanist, is kind of something that can just completely eat whatever the Goblins deck is trying to do, right? Cards like Shock, any of these small spells that interact with creatures, Dreadhorde Arcanist just gets to snap Caster Mage one of them every single turn. And that can be difficult for a deck that's trying to play three mana two twos. Well, no argument here, but nothing really going on with the Dreadheart Arcanist on this particular turn. So if you are rooting for Autumn Burchette, faded that problem thus far. You see the hand here for Autumn, a Phyrexian Tower, a Mountain, a Castle Embrith, a Goblin Matron, and a Goblin Chieftain. Looks like we're going to be going to the Matron, the Demonic Tutor for Goblins on Legs. So what are we going to dig up? Oh, that's a good choice of a magic card. <laughs> wow, I cannot believe we got Goblin Titan. <laughs> That one is uh that one's a real hoot that uh that Muxus. It's a very very powerful card. Can you believe we settled for Grave Titan? Yeah, how dare us? Really, how dare us? Just a disservice to ourselves. <laughs> <really>. <laughs> Young Fire Ranch is gonna make a knucklehead. We're gonna see Village Rights gonna sacrifice Stitcher Supplier. So that's uh that's a lot of material moving around in various zones. Um, but I'm not okay. So here's Dreadheart Arcanist. There better be a Thoughtseize down there. That's what I say. Okay, Ooh. here's the Village Rights. Draw four. That, what if goblins did that? Yeah. <laughs> Hypothetically, and put the cards on the battlefield. That would be, and some of them may have hate. I mean, that would be really strange. I, I would recommend for Daniel, uh, in, I, mm, I would recommend Thoughtseize, but I don't think we're going to get to see that this turn. So this, uh, I, this could be bad news. Ooh, triple block like it. Yeah, this is actually a really nice triple block considering there's a Phyrexian tower in hand. When you pair that with the treasure on the battlefield, Skirt Prospector actually isn't necessary. So if you get a free chance to answer the most problematic card in the matchup, uh -huh. you take it. There's the thought seize. That needed to be there, and it is there. So Mux is kindly... Oh! <laughs> this is what we call Damn. a thought seize bug. Damn. Sorry about that, Whammy. If someone cast a thought seize against me, I would simply draw the best card in my deck. That would be really smart for you to do that. Ringleader is going to yield a Wily Goblin and a Goblin War Chief. Get a Muxus with the Matron. What are we going to get with this Matron? Maybe another Muxus. Maybe <laughs> this is. Over Muxus. This is super cool. <laughs> what a top deck for Autumn for chat with that Muxus. And now we might just. I mean, what's better than a Muxus, right? Like, just Matron up Muxuses means that you can't make Autumn discard them all. All right, looks like Krenko. And here comes Ringleader. And a Wily one. All right, maybe not. Okay, just Ringleader. Now, Emma, I don't want to... I'm going to kind of put you on the spot here, if that's okay. Yeah. Even though you have no idea what to ask. Have you have you announced what you're playing in the Mythic Invitational? I know that Autumn has posted oh, it. Oh, yeah. Autumn and I work together for this. We're on the same 75. Okay, I, I, I assumed as much, but I didn't want to you don't out you or anything like that no, 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 if you no, wanted no. some secrecy okay I all right so you're it. you're on the goblin team all right i'm a fan of yours now even, not yeah, to say i wasn't before. a goblin token cedric yes we get it i love it i love it god i mean the goblins i played didn't look like this are you kidding me what do you mean there's two matrons and a ringleader on the battlefield yeah, those are my best those are, those are our best cards that? this is the best cards we had goblin <laughs> warchief in hand these are the goblins <laughs> Krinko was like a silver bullet against salt eye decks. Now it's just like an integral piece to the puzzle that you play four copies of. And don't get me started on Snoop Doggy Dog. Honestly, it's goblophobic that Goblin Shark Peter <laughs> is not legal. Yeah, that would be crazy if that card were legal. It's also, I mean, this format's so interesting in, in so far as like, you don't have to play four incinerators. You play like one to tutor for. Ooh, look at this line. All right. Goblin War Chief. Off oh the tower, reduces the cost of Krenko, who then activates immediately. Uh, this is a this is a healthy attack. Oh, just a 15-15? Okay, well, it doesn't trample. So there's that. 
And the idea behind saving these goblin tokens this turn, and the reason none of them went into the red zone, is specifically you don't want to trade off that much material since Krenko is just going to give you additional tokens for each body that you have next sure. turn. When you have two goblin chieftains in hand, you just want to have bodies. Yep, makes total sense. Frixing Tower, obviously legendary land. It's a powerful one. You found that one to be pretty good here? Oh, yeah, yeah. We okay. literally saw that there just now when it just shot Autumn up to the requisite amount of mana to basically spend seven mana off of five lands between the War Chief and the Tower. Okay. Those sorts of power plays are exactly what make this goblin deck as powerful as it is. I kind of like I, I kind of like the idea that it's a Phyrexian temple, or excuse me, a an Eldrazi temple kind of card for this deck. Here comes the War Chief. Cool. I'll go to eighteen. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a. Oh, I had to sacrifice a creature to priest. Hmm. Decisions. Decisions. Sixteen. Are you serious? <laughs> It's 16 all. It's all tied up. Dreadheart Arcanist. All right. Well, oh, boy. Well, didn't really need that, Muxus. And I think uh, I think Chieftain's probably going to end this one. Yeah. Here's a Chieftain. Here's a Chieftain. Here's a Krenko activation. This is an attack for 3,000 damage. That's not lethal. I don't know what is. Old Goblin Grandee had a farm. Yeah. <laughs> E-I, E-I, oh no. <laughs> this, minus 72, it, not bad. It's fine. Don't make <laughs> it weird. I'm not going to make it weird, I promise. <laughs> uh, sideboarding, we see a couple of fun ones hanging out over here. Looks like another Krenko might be coming in. Chain Whirlers, you got options uh, for Crater Maker, Incinerator. This is a this is a nice little sideboard. I'm a, I'm actually on, a, I'm on Autumn's Twitter right now, taking a look at the sideboard. Magma Spray, Red Cat Melee. Uh, Incinerators, Chain Whirler, Legion War Boss. I, okay, I haven't seen that one for a little bit. Ringleader on the board, Trash Master on the board. Okay. Now, you did say that this matchup can be a little bit difficult because of Dreadheart Ar Arcanist. Any other reasons? Any Anything else scare you from this matchup? That's the biggest thing that you're really that afraid of, right? Spot removal isn't particularly effective against Goblin Ringleader and Muxus unless you just have droves of it. So a lot of the time, you're just trying to make all of your cards worth a couple of points of damage whenever they exchange for spot removal spells, and okay. then check Dread Horde Arcanist and assume things will work out from there. Sometimes that means also checking Luris or holding up a braid in case they have claim fame. But other than that, you're kind of just going to be fine as long as you can try and activate Krinko, for example. Got it. Okay. So I'll ask you this. As players take a look at their opening hands, on hand looks, uh, probably looks good enough. Um, um, I presume you gave this Rakdos Pyromancer deck a try of the many decks that you tested? Don't make me talk about it. I Oh, boy. Viewers will get very upset, and honestly, I see a player at 3-0 with it, so I might just put my foot in my mouth. Okay, well, moving on back to the game. So there's just a flyer attacking for one. We'll see another one post-combat here for Daniel. Dragon Skull Summit? Claim? Okay, that's a pretty good start. Here's Snoop Doggy Does Dog. any of this matter? I, well, I for Daniel's sake, I hope so. Here's what I'll say. It looks good. There's things moving back and forth, cards coming from the graveyard to the battlefield and vice versa. Here's a thought season, here's a token. It all looks good. That's what we call now, a full it, house. Yeah. <laughs> we got matrons and chieftains. Here we go. Tough to poke a hole in that one. You ever just fan your cards out, tell your opponent to pair when they thought sees you? Yeah, and, and what you take you... doesn't matter because I'm in a top deck, so. Yeah, exactly. And now Priest of Forgotten Gods is on the battlefield, too. Okay, here's a matron. Um, be shocked. Well, it, it might not be Muxus. Maybe. Could be the mob boss. Yeah, so this is a, a matchup where you can just see Autumn prioritizing Krenko specifically over something like Muxus, because Muxus is still kind of far away. And Krenko is a card that a Claim to Firstborn shock deck is going to struggle to answer a little bit. Just having that Krenko on the way is huge. Well, here comes the Priest of Forgotten God trigger. Sacrifice Stitcher Suppliers, plural. Six are headed to the graveyard. Matron will be sacrificed. So getting a good look at the graveyard here is Burchett. 
see what the options here for Garcia Rosas are. Here's an innocent blood. Okay, that's cute. Make a token sack token. All right, battlefield is clear. Which means that you don't really want to play anything because it would just die to the priest unless you want to incentivize uh, Daniel to sacrifice some more of uh, his battlefield. Okay. Well, there's the uh, there's the chief then. No attacks. Yeah, this is a position where if you can, you want to actually just reduce the number of turns that or iterations of the turn that Garcia Rosas can take. So this is just forcing the priest's hand. Got it. Okay, Lurus on the battlefield. Now here comes Citrus Supplier. Okay, the House of Cards is built, Emma Handy. Look at look at us go. Just priest now. Thou, my my fear now is that you know. Muxus just gets cast and the game ends, as cute as all of these interactions are, which, for some reason, I can't see. I'm not from the future, but I feel like I'm seeing into the future. If there's enough, there might not be enough time to get there. Yeah, if Daniel can close the door next turn, then things can be fine. And that is exactly what it's going to take to win this game. Yeah. Not impossible by any stretch. Well, it's over now. Take your war chief, serve with a smile. Everybody getting in. Chieftain can block whatever, but it's going to be a lethal attack. Okay, so we're all tied up. Goblins, Rakdos, Pyromancer with Lurus as a companion getting ready here for game number three. How about that, Rakdos, Pyromancer fans and haters alike? Yeah, and that's the kind of game that actually ends up being great for these decks is where you can ha get Priest of the Forgotten Gods going or just any of your recurring sources of removal. That's one of the strengths of the Dreadhorde Arcanist that we talked about a little bit for earlier in the matchup. Priest of Forgotten Gods serves a very similar role, especially if you get it going with Young Pyromancer. That was... That was... I would say in upper echelon. I mean, I don't know if it's a top tier draw because Dreadheart Arcanist wasn't involved, but that's an upper echelon draw for Rakdos Power Mancer in this matchup, right? Like, it just feels like it has to be. Yeah, there's a spot where the card Priest of the Forgotten Gods is not something that most of these decks play a ton of. I see two of them in Daniel's list this weekend. You know, showed up there at the right time, and here it is again! This is a mountain. That is a timely abrade. Kindly leave, Priest. Maybe not. Mm, maybe not. Maybe so. And what we might end up seeing this match is Red Cat Melee do its Shard Volley impression. Okay. Just because a lot of the creatures in the vein of Lurus or Priest of the Forgotten Gods are so backbreaking, you're happy to just chuck a land away to permanently deal with them. But being able to hit, have that one mana answer to Dreadhorde Arcanist or Young Pyromancer is huge. Well, Young Pyromancer is going to come down. Now, here is the Claim Half of Claim Fame. So, Claim is going to get back Priest of Forgotten Gods. We're going to see Red Cat Melee. Goodbye, Young Pyromancer. Time to untap and draw. Top card of the deck is a Mountain for Snoop. This is a Goblin Chieftain. And we are clear for takeoff. Yeah, and you're pretty happy if Daniel were to double block your Goblin Chieftain, because then you get to trade it for the Priest. Sure. Claim? Uh-oh. Brutal exchange here. Yeah, this is not good news for Autumn Burchett. Priest trigger, or excuse me, priest activation. So goodbye, conspicuous noob, and we know the top card of the deck is a mountain. Well, we're playing towards one thing, aren't we? It seems like we're always playing towards that one thing, though. Look, we see the lands rolled up. Daniel needs to find Thoughtseize or this game will end. Mm-hmm. No Thoughtseize in the graveyard right now. There's a land. Pass the turn back. So Autumn's got to make it through this turn. If they're able to do that, then it's fun times with the Goblin Grandee. Dread All board. right. Okay. We're fading. What's this? Luris. Cool. Okay. Clear for right. takeoff. Spin the wheel. You priest now? Probably have to, right? Even if you're going to do it good. at some point, you do it now. Yeah. Even though I don't even know if that's good because you're sacrificing. I guess when you have Lurus in the battlefield, it's fine. 
Let's see what we let's see what we yield here. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's the worst muxes I've ever seen. <laughs> right the there. Worst? Shows you the legendary creature you already have in your hand. Yeah, that you're going to be drawing for the turn. Oh, no! Here is Stitcher Supplier. Three cards headed to the graveyard. That is not what the doctor ordered with that Muxus. Here is Fame on Dreadhorde Arcanist. Gonna be a thought seize. Take that Krenko. No good blocks to be had. Alright, well, you get to activate the Snoop now if you want. Assuming you make it to your next turn with the Snoop active, which you're not gonna, so. Just, just give it a second. <laughs> yep, there it goes. Alright, another priest. Krenko the draw. Krenko's not even a good draw. Wow. Alright, is there any way we make it through this turn? Hard to imagine with the number of cards Daniel has in hand. All right, knuckleheads. Is a claim coming back to move? Oh, no, because that can't take Krenko. Innocent blood. That's seven. That's it. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Daniel Garcia Rosas is going to win this game and match over Autumn Burchette. Two games to one. Right?